All right, so what's going on, guys? So I just, I just had to delete the last video because I feel like it wasn't fair to give you guys like, my first video, like actual upload on YouTube, is gonna be like an old video. So I decided to make a new video, right? So what I want to talk about in this new video is candles, but it's gonna be a new updated version of today, right? So I'm making this video right now at, um, on Saturday at 9:52 um, p.m. at night, right? So I'm gonna upload today or tomorrow, um, but it's gonna be uh, probably a new version of that video. All right, so updated version. That is kind of old. So let's talk about candles here. So what do you have in a candle? So people probably look at candles like, man, Don, um, a candle is not important, man. This is all a candle is, man. This is just one candle. It doesn't represent anything. But man, every candle matters. And every candle is going to determine the next movement on the charts. The ne one candle leads to the next candle leads to the next candle. That's how it works, right? That's how you get one huge move. So, so what, you, what you do with candles is you get one candle, you add it with candle number two. Candle number two, you add it together, you get one big story, and you keep like you know, keep repeating those steps, make one huge confirmation for your trade. And that's how I trade. I just look at straight candles and just straight support and resistance, right? As you guys have probably seen the live streams every morning at 6 30 a.m. Eastern. So let's talk about candles here. So what do you have in a candle is you have um a low, you have a high, you have a body, and yeah, like that, right? So what people don't know is that in a candle, you actually, have, you actually have a range. And what that range is, is right here. This is the range. Boom. To there. Boom. All right. So that from here to there, there to there. So how is this a range done? It's just one candle. This is a wick. Well, a wick is a range. If you guys haven't known that, a wick is actually a range. So why is a wick a range? Well, this is why wick is a range. So you have, let's say you have this candle, you have, so this is, this is a one hour candle right here. Boom. And now you have the 30 minute candle, 30 minute time frame, which is right here. So this is a one hour, I'm gonna draw a 30 minute right, real quick. So there's two 30 minute candles and one hour, and a one hour candle. Um, I mean, there's two 30 minute candles, right? So this is the first candle, boom. And then the second candle is probably bearish because it ended off with the wick. So let's say the second candle is like this, boom. I think I drew this kind of wrong. I think it should be more like this. Uh, this. Like that. So these two candles equals this candle. Well, Don, why is that equal that? It doesn't make any sense. Well, we obviously have a wick here, which is your range, like I mentioned, right? So if you look to the 30 minute candle, the second candle closed bearish. Meaning that price made a support right here. Oh, my bad. That's not the one I was looking for. Right there. Price made a support and now price is making resistance. Same goes over here. You know, price made a support, price made a resistance. Because price closed. So when it kind of closes, that's technically like the support that it made, like that officially made on that candle. And the wick that I made was a resistance, right? Meaning that now you have a support and you have a resistance. This is the high that it tapped. So mean that this is now a range. If you look to this now, over here, the 30 minutes, um, the 30 minute part right here, you have low, you have a high. Boom, what's in this? A range, because of this bearish candle right here. So what you do in this range is you can one, wait for a breakout, or two, um, anticipate a wave flow. So let's go on a one hour. Oh, no, let's go on a 30 minute. The one, on a 30 minute time frame, we obviously have this range here, from here to here, like I mentioned. So, like I said, you wait for a breakout of that range. So you never want to trade in a range. That's, that's something you don't want to be stuck in. So um, here, same goes for one candle. Like this may not look like a big range. This may not look, even look like a range to you, but it is a range because the range is, all, is a support and resistance. So what you do in range scenarios is you wait for a breakout. So what I'll wait for this scenario is I'll wait for probably a price to break above this level like this, bullish break above this, these key levels, then to buy position to go up bullish and follow the trend, right? Because that's what a range is. Price can't continue. That's why, that's, there's a reason why candles have pullbacks, right? Because they can't, one candle just, can't just go like, boom, straight up, unless it's a, a news candle, right? But obviously there's always a retracement after, no matter what in the market, there's always a retracement. Because if there's no retracement in the market, it'll be so easy, just buy it and hold it forever. But this retracement and, you know, long-term retracement or, or short-term retracement, all the same shit, right? There's always a retracement. But so in this case, we had a huge move up bullish right here. And now this is your retracement. Price pull back down to the range. So what you do here is wait for a breakout. The breakout would be right here. Price broke above that range. And now the account's continuing further up bullish. Same goes for this 
over here. Let me erase all this mess. It's kind of messy. My bad, guys. Um, let me erase all this. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. So what you could do, what you could do here, because okay, so now I'm, I'm talking about wick fills. This is a, a minor lesson on wick fills. I'm not gonna go too full in depth into these on wick fills, but this is a minor lesson on wick fills. So what is a wick fill done? So a wick fill is when you have a candle like this bullish, and then the next candle fills it like this. Boom. Right. So this is my favorite candle. I can I talk about this candle on the live streams like probably all the time. Um, I always enter like majority of times this this all plays out for me for me, depending on the scenario. Um, but what a wick fill is is when a candle fills the range. It fills a wick, which is the range, like I said, and the continual is bullish. You see how this lines up with this now? This move up, these two candles right here is this one huge candle. All it did here was break the high of that to go up bullish. So one, you can, like I said, you can have a buy stop or some, or a, um, enter look for buys when price breaks above is these, these, this yellow line right here. Or you can go back on a one hour time frame and anticipate it to fill the wick because when price makes a wick, all it's doing is making support. Boom, makes a support. And then as it breaks the high of that high, you can have a bias up there to go up bullish and that's when price fills the wick. And now you see, yes, you have how a wick fill is just a range getting filled. That's all that it is. So um, that's what a wick fill is. Oh, and also another thing. So whenever you see price, like, okay, for example, um, back to wick fill, whenever you see price making a high price, I'd say 65% of the time always retests the high. And when it retests the high for a second time, it usually breaks the high. Probably like 80% of the time, it breaks the high. People call it double bounce, double toss, call whatever you want. But whenever price breaks the high, um, whenever price retests the high, it has a higher chance of breaking the high because because that pullback that I made, so for example, you had an uptrend like this, you had that pullback, that pullback might just be a pullback to go back up bullish, right? So this is where people will sell. People will sell as it breaks, it makes double top, and boom, they'll sell it right here. Come down, I have resistance, right? But on, a, on, a, on the streams, you guys probably wonder, Don, how do you get these entries when you when it's at resistance or is that support? Well, this is how it's all in the candles, right? You guys probably, probably think I'm some type of magician or some shit, but I'm telling you guys, I'm not. It's all in the candles. Candles tell me everything, right? So when price retests the high, so let me clear all this up again. Um, where you guys got confused there. When price retests the high, it has a high chance of breaking it. For example, right here, boom, price made a high, price pulled back, retested the high, and when it retested the high, it broke the high. So when it broke the high, what happened? Boom, buys above, price continues to shot up. And probably this week, last week, the week before, on the live streams the past couple of months, you guys probably seen this one entry I did all the time. Every single time, you guys probably seen, probably seen this one single entry. Probably like majority of my trades are this type of entry, this wick right here, this wick fell, or just, a bunch of confluence lining up to that one move, right? But it's all similar. One of these streams is all similar to what I do um, yeah, every day. So like I said, whenever price retests the high, it has a high chance of breaking the high to continue up bullish, right? So same goes for here. Price makes a, a, a body, closes bullish with a nice wick. It fills that wick. And when it fills that wick, it's going to break that wick because that wick is very weak. Wicks are very weak, right? Because on a smaller time frame, sure, it's bodies. Because bodies are more of a strong. The reason why that is because, like, yo, when's the last time you ever drew a resistance at um, a, a wick? You never drew it like this. No, you draw it like actual body, see? Resistance. You see some um, exhaustion counts right there. Boom. Draw a uh, resistance right there. Boom. This becomes support now, right? Same shit goes for here. Um, when price breaks a wick, a wick is very weak. So chances, the chance of price breaking a wick than breaking bodies is quite higher. So that's why whenever you see a wick fill, you usually see price continue, continue up further than the actual wick fill. And boom, same goes over here. See how this lines, this lines up with this now? It's the same shit, guys. It's just a different time frame. So that's why you got to break down your candles to all the time frames. You guys ask them, Don, what time frame do you trade? This and that. I trade every single time frame. Five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, everything, right? I just put every single candle together to make one huge story. And that's how I get my daily um, targets, my this target. Right, because on the streams, man, my target, my daily targets probably hit majority of times. You guys probably witnessed it live every stream, right? You guys are like, Don, how do you get those targets? How do you get this? It's all within the candles, guys. Trust me, I do nothing magical. All I do is read candles and just do simple price action. So, hope you guys enjoyed that quick video I did. Um, I think it was better than the last one because the last one was kind of updated. I was kind of out of it, but um, this video should be a lot better. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, catch you guys um on the live streams from Monday to Friday, and I'm hoping it has a great week and um, peace.